you on today's show with Bruce Cameron, who is the author of A Dog's Purpose. That was amazing, and I love that he took the dogs through different lives because we all know that losing a pet is one of the most heartbreaking things that we can ever go through, and this was so inspiring because in his books and movies, the dogs come back to us or the cats come back to us. Any of your pets can come back. Before we get started into the message of today, I want to uh, shout out to Vita Jewel, who is the show's sponsor, and they have a new product out, and we're doing a giveaway today, and it's the Vita Jewel Crown Jewel Water Bottle, or water, it's a not a water bottle, I'm sorry, a water bowl for your dogs. So it's for your pets, and the crystals that are inside this bowl is Jade for Vitality, Brown Agate for Strength. Clear Quartz for Awareness, Peridot for Balance, and Mangano Calcite for Social Behavior. And when my dog was really sick, I did an elixir into a glass bowl of crystals as well to help with the sort of the, uh, the health and wellness of the water coming into them. So first person to shoot me an email that has listened to the show, my email is emily, E-M-I-L-Y, A like apple, francis, F-R-A-N-C-I-S, at gmail.com. Or you can just go right onto the Healthy Life webpage, and you can go onto my website and shoot me an email from there. Just get in touch with me. Tell me that you listen to the show, and that you love Bruce Cameron as much as I do, and, you're, and you want your dog bowl. So that is our giveaway today. First person to get in touch with me gets the crown jewels. I will ship it off to you. I already have it here so I can ship it right to you. So make sure that you shoot me an email and thank you Vita Jewel for this beautiful giveaway and for being our sponsor. So today's energy corner is going to be very different than any other energy corner because we are going to talk about the thing that that in my personal life really drives me and um, not all of it is really positive unfortunately and that is animal rescue. So I do want to talk about this because there's not enough education in our country about this. Do you remember those years ago when when the Olympics were in um, one of those countries where the dogs were on the streets and people were heartbroken to see these homeless pets and then the, the person in charge of the town ordered the execution of the dogs because they didn't want people to see all these homeless dogs on the street. And people went crazy and they rallied together in the United States and we brought in all these dogs from the Olympic Village and from that town and everybody felt really so sad for these animals. But the truth is, I mean, I, I am so grateful that we did this, but the truth is if you had any idea how many animals are killed every single day in our shelters, you would work harder to save the animals at home. So I just want to give you a quick, just some numbers. In the last year, 3.3 million animals were put down in the United States in animal shelters. 3.3 million. And in the South alone, as 1.5 million. So I'm really doing a shout out to the South because I am so disappointed in our political figures in the South with respect to how they treat our animals. Our animals are given 24 to 48 hours of being turned in before they're put down for space. And uh, people that give their dogs to the animal control thinking like, okay, somebody else is gonna adopt this dog. If you own or surrender a dog, that means that they can kill that dog or cat immediately because there's no one coming to claim the dog. So it's not under a stray hold, which means if you come in and you own or surrender and you turn around and decide you made a mistake, that animal more than likely, more times than not, will already have been put down. So some of these shelters literally take the animals and go right to the back and put them down. And I'm not trying to be a downer because I know this show is all about healing, but if we don't have the education, then we are not going to make the change. And the change has got to happen because our lawmakers don't care. They don't care about the animals. I wish they did. I wish they had compassion for the animals, but they don't. And, and you know, we get really disgusted at these countries that eat the animals, but at least they're eating them. Because because here in the United States, we're not using them for science, we're not using them to eat, we're not using them for, for biology, we're using them for nothing. They're, they're taken out in a garbage bag and they're thrown in the trash and that's it, and there's nothing. And here it is, this beautiful sentient being, and we are just totally disregarding it. And it breaks me to pieces. And this is something that I deal with on a daily basis. And I work with Angels Among Us Pet Rescue. And Angels Among Us has saved 16,000 dogs and cats in the last nine years. They have over a million followers. They've been featured in People Magazine for some of their dog dog rescue, dog rescue photos, the, the hugging dogs that love each other so much that were in the doggy jail. That was one of ours. 
uh, and that made it into People magazine. And, and I'm so grateful that I'm part of a group that has saved so many animals. But with that amazing number of 16,000 dogs and cats out of 1.5 million in the South, it's just really heartbreaking. And the reason that I'm clamming down on the lawmakers and the people that are in charge that just really don't care about the animals, here's how I can prove it. In the North and in the West, in other states, they don't have that sort of euthanasia rate. And so we actually put together transports for animals out of the shelter to travel to those other places, mostly up north, because their spay and neuter laws are so much tighter that they don't kill so many animals for space. I, I mean, I really, this is not something that I will bring up all the time, but since we had Bruce Cameron on, I'm just going to take it all the way in because we have got to make a change for our animals and for our pets because somebody can steal your dog and then go take it to the shelter and say they're the owner and boom, that dog is gone. And that's really heartbreaking. And the, and the shelters, they're doing the best they can. I used to get really mad at the shelters. I used to think it was their fault, but it isn't their fault. They're the only ones actually trying really hard. There's a, there's a small animal shelter here in Georgia, Polk County. A big shout out to Polk. That's my main shelter that I work with because the animal advocates that work with them get so many dogs rescued and adopted. It's amazing. And they work tirelessly 24 seven. And, and the reason I know that is because every Wednesday, all the dogs that are on the urgent list that are gonna be put down in the morning, they work really hard to get these dogs rescued before Thursday. So every Wednesday is my, oh, I don't, I don't even know if I can see this. And it breaks your heart. And when you do get involved and you're, you fall in love with a certain dog or cat and you can't get them rescued, I gotta tell you, those are the days that make you think, okay, I'm done with this. I'm really done with this. I can't handle it. And honestly, if you're a person that loves drama, really, if you love drama or soap operas, get involved in Animal Rescue because, oh my goodness, the drama that goes into, did we pull them in time? Are they alive? Are they not alive? Did the shelter say yes? Do you have a hold at the shelter? Is there a transporter that can come get it? It is insane. It is a back and forth all day long. And that's with all kinds of rescues. That's not Angels Among Us per se, but I've worked with a lot of different local rescues. I even uh, developed a certain 5K race for Animal Rescue that that one of the animal rescues here uses. And it was my idea because it's a great way to make more money to help get these animals to safety. But it is, it's heartbreaking. But I, I just, I wanted to make sure that I put those stats out there because I wish the whole world understood owner surrender status. Never take your dog to a shelter if you can help it. Now, if you go to a no-kill shelter, it actually has to say no-kill. So if you're doing like the SPCA or uh, there's a couple of places around here, and they're no-kill places, so you know that you, if you surrender your pet, it is going to find a way to a family, and that is so beautiful. But the animal shelters, the animal control, and the state-run, state-funded animal places that you think are safe places, that is not the case, and it's not... It's not the shelter volunteers and the shelter staff's fault. They don't want to do this. It's awful. But that's what that's the reality. So every time that anybody goes and takes an animal into those shelters and signs those papers that you are the owner and that you are not interested in your surrendering this pet, you are signing their death warrant more, more than likely. And, and sometimes they get really lucky. But in Georgia, I'm going to call out a few things. In South Georgia or in rural Georgia, they have a shelter here with 100% euthanasia rate. They will not work with rescue. They will not adopt out to people. If an animal goes into that shelter, that animal does not come out 100% of the time. And that is a problem with the lawmakers because the fact that that's even happening and that nobody knows this unless you're actually knee deep in animal rescue and find out that these little podunky shelters are just killing every animal that comes in the doors, that's disgusting. Why even have one? Just, just shut the place down and let the animals actually be stray and fend for themselves and find homes. I don't know. It's, it's really sad and it's very disgusting and it's very concerning because it is predominantly a Southern issue. Not that, not that the other shelters don't do it, but the South has really got to get it together. So here I am doing Emily's Energy Corner and the video to say, Southern lawmakers, let's get it together. Let's save some of these animals. And for everybody else, thank you for listening. Next week will be a little bit more positive on the Emily's Energy Corner. I just had to take it there my one and only time. So there it is. And you guys, you're responsible for making it a great week. And I can't wait to see you back here next Wednesday.